Google Shopping is a great way to get additional people to find your products easily when they're searching online. And you can actually connect your Shopify store to a Google merchant account, which lets you then manage the Google product listings directly in your Shopify admin area, which saves a ton of time and lets you easily be able to manage your product listings moving forward. So there are a few different requirements for country or currency being able to use Google Shopping for your Shopify store. So I'm going to put a link in the description to a help article that has more information on that. So let's go into my computer screen now and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up Google Shopping for your Shopify store step by step. So just pull up your Shopify backend and follow along. So to get to the Google Sales Channel, you're just gonna click on Sales Channel and this arrow here and then you'll see all of your existing sales channels and we'll go ahead and click on recommended. Now you'll see Google channel listed here and we can just hit add. If you don't see that in your recommended apps, you can always go to the Google app store and add it in there. Now we will go in and just verify the connection here and all that it has access to and click add sales channel. Next, you're going to connect your Google account. So we'll click connect. And then we are going to just go in and allow permissions for it to connect. We've got certain things that need to be connected in, like adding in the valid payment method, removing the store password, having a refund policy page. And it looks like it's just wanting us to confirm that we've added in our contact information, which we do, and we'll just hit confirm. Now you can connect to an existing Google Merchant Center account, which is going to allow us to do Google Shopping. However, I don't have one of these yet, so I'm just gonna click Create New and Create New Account. So now it's created an account for me because I'm already signed into my Google account. It's pulling in my information, so I'll just click Connect. Now I'm going to enter my phone number in here to get texted a code to verify that I have access to this. I've now verified my phone number and I'm just going to go in and clarify my product feed settings. And then you could click manage here if you wanted to set up different shipping information for things through the Google sales channel. However, I just want to use my existing Shopify store shipping settings. And now you've got the terms and conditions that you can click here to read. Once we agree to these and click complete setup. Our products will then start to sync with Google. So it'll take a few days or hours to approve different products. Now that you've got this set up, you can also go in and enable either to do performance max and do ads. You can do YouTube shopping so your products can actually show up underneath a video on your YouTube channel, or you can do it buy on Google so that they can directly check out on Google. So you can go through and customize any of these. There's different things that you need to approve and set up for each of these. However, this is going to be the baseline to set up with Google Shopping. It will take some time for Google to go in and actually approve or show any errors that you need to fix. So you can always get back to this by clicking on sales channels and Google here. And I recommend hitting this pin icon here next to the name Google in the left sidebar. So that way you've pinned it and it's a little bit easier to come back to and make any edits once these products start getting synced and you have a few errors that may come in that need to be fixed. Okay, so it's been a couple days now since this has been set up and everything has been synced now. And you can see here, we've got 20 products or variants that have been approved to show up with Google Shopping. So now we just need to go in and add some additional product details so that they have the best performance with Google. So we'll just click on manage products. So if you had any errors that you had for your products, it would show up in this first column here next to product errors. You can see Google here with the check boxes are the products that are set up to work for Google. So for me and my store, these are the products that are active. Any of the products that were just in draft mode are not set up to be syncing. And once I made those active, we would then go through this process. So if you're considering on making them active soon, like I am, I'll probably go ahead and sort out the details for them as well, just so that they will be ready whenever I make those products live. The barcode here is because this is an ISBN number because it is a book. And if you have a product that is not a custom product and does have an ISBN or a UPC or any kind of barcode information, it is good to put that in. And a lot of times 
depending on your product category, Google will require this so that it can properly showcase it compared to others in the search results. If it is a custom product though, and you do not have this information, if you're making it yourself, you don't have any of those things set up, then you'll want to go in here to this custom product field and you'll say true that it is a custom product. So I'm gonna just say false for this first one because I've got the ISBN, but this bread puzzle here, it is a custom, just print on demand product. So I'm going to say custom product for that. Next you have age group, and these are not requirements to have these different fields set up. However, I do find that it can just help a little bit more in getting your products found in the search results. So for age group, you can click in here and choose the correct category for you. So for me, I'm going to say kids for the book and gender I'm going to set as unisex. So I would go through and do this for all the different products that I have. So you can scroll over and there's a lot of conditions that you can see that you can keep adding in. However, a lot of them are really not a requirement to do. I like to do through this first set and do to condition. Those are the ones that I think are the most common for a lot of stores. And you can look through and see if any of the others would be applicable for you as well. So for the condition, I will set this as new um, for all of my products as well as this Google product category. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because Google actually has a specific type of way that they like to categorize products. So I have got the full list of how they like to categorize products um, pulled up right here on my screen. It's a little overwhelming. We're just gonna be searching on the page to find what we're looking for. Um, and I'll put a link to this exact sheet in the description below as well. So I'm just going to do fine for the page and do children's book. See if anything comes up, we've got zero. So let's just do book and see where that puts us. Um, maybe print book, print books. Okay. So we could do print books. So I am just going to copy this. I don't need to do the numbers. I'm just gonna copy that as is, just the words with all of the formatting included. And I'm gonna paste this in here just so I don't lose it while I'm going to look and see if there's something else that maybe would work better for me. So let's just do book again and see, let's see, we have book accessories, address books, business cards. That may be what would work best for us. Um, let's see, education, let's see if there's anything. And we can just go through this. Reading toys, yeah, I think it might just be the book that would work best. You'll just wanna go through and start thinking of how your products could be listed and try and see different ways. Again, it may not be in there. Let's see, children isn't even in here, that's kind of crazy. Um, maybe child, just have to play around with it and see if you can find something similar to how your product is listed. But okay, I'm not seeing anything that's specific for child. So I'm just gonna keep this as it is. And you would just continue to go through. So the next one would be puzzle. So I would come in here, find it. Let's see, puzzles, jigsaw puzzles. So we will say jigsaw puzzles, try and be a little bit more specific Put it in here, paste, and you would continue on down. This does kind of take the most time out of everything to go through, especially if you have a lot of different products. And if you have things like apparel where you have different colors for things, you may want to add that in as well to the color field here or material as well. Again, you'll want to look and see what works best for your products and try and just give as much information as you can in filling out the categories so that it's more likely to show up correctly in the Google shopping feed. So once you've made all the edits that you need to do for your different categories and fields, you can just hit save. And now you've got that set up and ready to go. And you'll just want to, as you add new products, make sure that you're going back into the Google tab and customizing all that as well. Any new product might have where it has sync issues. So again, you can navigate to all that by going on Google over here under sales channels, and you can see all of that information show up as you add new products as well. 
I hope you found this video tutorial helpful and Google Shopping can be a great way to get free traffic to your Shopify store. I've also got another video over here where I go over my favorite free traffic sources for Shopify stores, so make sure to check that out as well. And if you're interested in doing Google ads to actually promote your Shopify store, then make sure to hit that subscribe button because I've got another video tutorial coming out soon that you won't want to miss.